Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Claddy. For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm usually here on Adobe Live having fun with so many different apps. And today we are getting started with two different apps. So we're going to be working cross apps with both Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. So if you ever wondered how to work with those apps together, this is the, get, the, the day to get started. But first of all, I want to say hi to the chat for all of you that have woken up so early just to hang out with me. Hi team, nice to see you. Finally, it's been a long time. Um, very nice to see you here. Also, I can see Austin Browning in the chat, Sean saying good day everyone and saying also good morning everybody, buongiorno. And also I can say I can see Andrea Oller, Nadia, Austin, Sean, Anthony Keen, Biola tuning in. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. So I'm going to show you right away what we're going to be producing today. We're going to take it slow while we build a logo uh, made by this little kitten's illustration here. So <laughs> this is actually what we're going to be designing. And uh, then we're going to be jumping into Photoshop in order to animate that logo. And I'm going to show you how that looks in just a second. But it's really important also for me to show you the full fun day here at Adobe Live. In fact, we are just getting started today with this logo animation. But after me, there is a fantastic schedule. So let me jump into it real quick so I can talk you through it. <laughs> because as you can see, there are so many fantastic people coming after me. In fact, you will start with Paul Trani with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge at 9 a.m. Pacific time, which will be 5 p.m. here in the UK. And yeah, by the way, I'm here. I'm back in Manchester. As you probably uh, were following me on your social, on my social media, I was visiting my family in the south of Italy, but now I'm in the UK. So I'm going to be giving you both um, UK times and Pacific times. But yeah, Paul is jumping right in with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge and 9 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. here in the UK. Then Anna Devinscourt is going to drive you through a wonderful journey in the character design. I'll be there tuning in. I love Anna and her illustration, and I'll be really looking forward to the character design stream. Followed by the wonderful Andrew Ockradle with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge at 11.30 a.m. And then video editing with Puno from I Love Creatives at 12 p.m. Followed by the I uh, believe third daily creative challenge of the day with Jesse Showalter at 2 p.m. in XD. And then to close the day with a lovely Alice Lee and Doodle Therapy at 2.30. So we start, we, we start in a very wonderful way. And I know that if you are in the States, probably yesterday you, day, you had a day off. Here in uh, the UK, it wasn't a day off, so <laughs> I've been actually working myself. But um, I wanna, I hope that everyone has had a wonderful three-day weekend. And I know that many of you hopefully have enjoyed it. Let me know in the chat if you've done anything special um, during this long weekend, and most importantly, where you're from. So I know that maybe you had a long weekend, or like me, you were just. Um, working on Monday. Fantastic. I can see Angelina and Amy saying uh, hello everyone and Amy is saying already hello from Phoenix. Um, hello from Manchester. So let's jump back into my main landing real quick. I just want to show everyone these little cute kitties that we're going to be drawing today in Adobe Illustrator. And then I'm going to jump right into my screen uh, because I want to show you how you can participate if you want in this getting started. In fact, I I provided a file for you to download you'll be able um, to uh, get the resources file which is an Adobe Illustrator file and let me show you how to get there uh, and you can also be able to see the preview of our final results so uh, maybe you can walk it together and again this is a getting started session good morning for everyone we're getting started with the, this app but most importantly we are gonna be learning how to work 
cross up, how to jump from one up to the other without losing concentration, without losing time. And I'm going to share with you my time saving techniques. Um, also, I can see Biola saying in the chat, perfect, maybe I can save some time jumping cross up. Exactly. That's what we're going to be learning today. Mustafa is saying hello from Istanbul. Thank you so much for being here. And for those of you, I can see on the corner of my eye, the uh, chat running speed light at uh, YouTube. So if you are writing and messaging uh, on YouTube, make sure to jump in on Behance dot net slash live so i will be able to see your messages because otherwise i know that our lovely team is going to be there um sharing the messages with you and replying to you but i won't be able to reply live also i welcome any question this is a very safe space where we learn how to solve creative problems while we learn how to use our wonderful adobe apps in particular today with illustrator and photoshop but uh, let me go back into the website. So all you have to do is to head on iamclady.com, which is my uh, website for videos and tutorials. And all you have to do is to click on resources. And there, as soon as you scroll down, here it is. And let me jump in. Let me, actually, I can put it just above my head. Here it is. So this is the animation that we're going to be creating today. We're going to create First of all, our illustration, bear in mind, we have one hour and a half. So we're going to be optimizing our time, working slow and getting started while we learn how to create these vector illustrations, starting from simple shapes in uh, Adobe Illustrator. And then we're going to move the eyes and create these little stars and also animate the typography in Photoshop. So if you want to get started and perhaps you just want to uh, focus on the animation side, all you have to do is to click on here on the starter file and you'll be taken into a Dropbox folder uh, that contains the uh, assets. So all these little shapes that we're going to be animating and the color palette, but also the final. So if you ever want to have a better look at how um, this animation looks like, that's definitely the right place to be. Mini Stereo saying, love Manchester and Oasis. Yes, that's a, a pretty awesome place. I, it's been about, I think, 10 years, probably more than 10 years that I live here. It's been a while. So as you probably know, I'm from the south of Italy, but I do uh, live in Manchester, in, actually in the UK, from over 10 years. I haven't even thought about it. I'm almost British. I'm actually working on that right now. Also, I can see Vele saying, uh, Hello, Claudie, great to see you here. We met last year's at Max and we kept meeting in the elevator. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that was amazing. I will definitely come and say hi to you, Vele. Thank you so much for joining me here. And so sad when we cannot see each other at Max, but I'm going to give you uh, another quick tip. At the moment here, you see that this, uh, there is an Adobe Max tab. At the moment, is a work in progress page, so you don't need to go there yet. Uh, but Adobe Max is coming and it's going to be free for all. So go to max.adobe.com if you want to learn more. Maybe we can talk about it more during these days. Let me know if it's something that you want to know. And uh, we're going to uh, jump into work right now. So I'm going to start by uh, opening Adobe Illustrator. And this is the file that you will have if you download the getting started from uh, my resources pages. So you already have the final shapes in order to understand what is your end result. But we're going to take it back and really, really start from the beginning. I want to know from those of you in the chat who has never worked with Illustrator before. And if, for example, if you want to learn how to personalize your workspace, because that's something that we can do today in the getting started. Personalize the workspace simply means uh, making sure that all these lovely panels that we work with are the specific panels that we enjoy working with or perhaps the one that we use more often. So we don't have to head all the time under the window menu in order to find the one that we're, uh, that we're looking for. We kind of create our own presets of panel. Our wonderful team is sharing all the links in the chat. So make sure to head on behance.net slash live in order to have those clickable links, both for having access to my resources pages and to get more information on max.adobe.com. Biola say just started learning Illustrator. Ministerio says I know like 1%. And Susan, I just started. Fantastic. So I'm going to take it slow. We're going to dive in one step at a time. So I'm going to head back to the home page. So this is how Illustrator looks uh, for you if 
you open it for the first time and ministerial say i don't understand a lot of things where you are in the right place don't worry this is a place where we learn um to understand things and tools and techniques so feel free to pop any questions i'll keep my eyes on the chat while i work and uh, i'll be able to reply to your questions so keep those questions coming fantastic so i'm gonna start a new document by clicking on create new and then you can decide what sort of intent you have for your document. So, for example, I want to create this animation for Instagram. So I know already that I'm going to be building something that is for screen. And Adobe Illustrator helps us already with some presets. In fact, all I have to do is to select my intent to web. I'm going to zoom in into my screen and you see here that we have mobile, web, print, film and video and art and illustration. So Adobe Illustrator is already giving you an option in order to understand sizes. So for example, let's have a look. If I click on web, we already have some web pages sizes that are there. We can see a MacBook Pro Retina, uh, 13 inches, 15 inches, and then the standard sizes for presentation, which is um, 1920 by 1080 or the lower resolution, which is 1280 by 800. So those are ready to go. All you have to do is to click on once. But what if you want to create a custom size? Well, all you have to do is to head here um, under the width panel and then you can double click in order to input your data. Something that I wanted to share with you as well. Look what happens if I change between print and web. Illustrator already changes the um, the, the sizes that we're going to be using. So instead of uh, pixels, if we work for web, we're going to jump into millimeters if we're going to be working for print. And of course, I'm in Europe, so millimeters is my option. But probably if you're in the States, um, inches is the right option for you. Uh, but what I really wanted to show you is that that helps you so much already to identify what sort of output you're going to be creating. So today we're going to be working towards something that will be shared on screen. Therefore, I'm going to click on web and we're going to be working in pixels and I'm going to use the size of an Instagram post, which is 1080 pixels. So I'm just going to type that in by 1080 pixels. All you have to do is to type those number in and then double click in order to name your file. I'm going to call this one logo animation. And then all you have to do is to click on create in order to open your file. And I can see Noor, nice to see you. Welcome back in the chat. Um, and I can see that you're saying a lot to Sean. Also, Crust Puppers 5980, I haven't realized it yet. I did, I've seen you. <laughs> Fantastic. I hope that I spell your name right. If you guys know me, um, you know, I'm not the best with names. Sometimes I misspell. I apologize in advance. <laughs> and um, yes, I did see you also, Susan. Fantastic. Great. So since we are starting uh, in Illustrator and I can see the majority of you um, is, is not been working with Illustrator for a long time or some of you just say it. No, I just know 1%. Let me tell you some fantastic tricks. So now we have opened our artboard. Um, our artboard is the space that is going to be um, output into a file. So the difference between this white area and this gray area, which is called pasteboard, is that if, for example, we place a shape here in the pasteboard is not going to be printed or show into our file. We need to move it inside our artboard in order to uh, make it part of our design. So the artboard is actually defining the space uh, of our design. Then let's jump and talk about our panels. As you can see, I have a, a workspace called Cladi. If you just open Illustrator for the first time, the uh, one that you'll be having is uh, the Essential. Let me reset it so you can have a better look. So your, your um, Adobe Illustrator should say essentials. So how did I do it to put my names there and why did I do that? So the reason why I had my own panel is because I work a lot in Illustrator and I enjoy using the same panels over and over again, at least some of the, um, the one that I, that I use more often that we're going to be using today are, for example, that transform panel. And as you can see, all I've done in order to go and search my panel is to head under the window menu at the very top and then select transform. Then I'm going to go back and select, for example, swatches 
and also my libraries. Um, so those are uh, some of the panels that I work with very often. And um, as you can see, they all get like scattered around the page. So what I advise you to do is to make sure that once you realize uh, the panel that you want to work with, for example, appearance um, is a panel that you're going to be using a lot. All you have to do is to click and drag it in order to um, um, put them together. So for example, I can also click and drag and put my libraries inside this column that I have. You can create also two columns depending on how much space you want to take. And let's say that this is uh, exactly the way that I wanted my panel to look like. And for example, I also can, uh, I'm not going to use brushes, so I can drag the brushes panel out and then click on the X to delete it. And uh, I want the symbols panel below. So all I have to do is to click on the label and drag it down. And you can see this blue line is there to tell us, hey, we're about to drop it right here. So we're about to move it at the bottom of the panels, just like so. When you're ready with your uh, new panel and with your new workspace, all you have to do is to click on this down pointing arrow and go and click under new workspace. Now I want to call this one test zero one. And you can name yours with your name. I already have a cloudy one, so I'm not going to do it again. And then I'm just going to click on OK in order to save it. And look what happens. Our workspace is changing to test01. That means that every time that we open uh, a new file, we're going to be able to use our workspace the way that we like it, the way that we set it up, just with the panel that we're comfortable using. That's such a great time saver because it allows you to stay focused and using just the panel that you enjoy using. And also it takes away the distraction from all the other panel that you don't really need. So I would say that definitely properties panels, red layers, libraries, swatches and uh, align or transform are the real basics. Now, what happens if when you work, you start to drag them out, you, you know, it looks like you are uh, creating a bit of a mess with your beautiful new workspace. Well, that's not a problem that happens all the time, no matter how many years you've been working with the app. And if you're a professional, if you just started, that happens all the time that you're looking for something and you start to move it around. And that's why Adobe Illustrator comes to our help. In fact, if we click again on this down pointing arrow and we click on reset, test one, it consolidates back the panels the way that we saved it originally. So we can always go back to our workspace. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to click on the down pointing arrow and head to the cloudy workspace. And here it is. That's the way that I enjoy working nice and clean. Fantastic. So let's start to play with some shapes. Hopefully everything is clear. Uh, Catherine, welcome into the stream. You're a bit late. Don't worry. You can always, uh, watch this back. This is actually recorded. So you'll be able to watch the stream again. And also you can replay and pause. And we haven't started with the design. Maybe Catherine, something that you want to do. I'm just going to jump in real quick is to show you to download the resources file. You can add uh, on my website on the resources pages. And I also want to show you what we're going to be creating today. So today we're going to be creating this little kitty with his eyes moves. And hopefully we're going to get to animate the text as well. So let's start to build our lovely cat. And let me know in the chat if you guys have any pets. Um, if you know me already, you probably know that I love pretty much all animals. I'm a big fan of cats, dogs, horses, fishes. Lately, I was in the south of Italy uh, for holiday. And I think that uh, Nor said before in the chat, I, then I saw that it was holiday. Uh, oh, you're probably referring to yesterday, to Monday. Yes. Well, I was holiday in the, on holiday on the south of Italy for a while, for a few days. And I was literally swimming with fishes. I can't believe it. Like there were so many fishes because of the lockdown. There are not being many people outside that the fishes were not afraid. The fish were not afraid of humans. So they were coming literally close and swimming with me, which it was fantastic. Yes, Catherine, we're going to make a little cat. So let's get started. We're going to start by using shapes and you can find many shapes nested here under the rectangle tool. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in into my toolbar. And now you can see that I have many different tools into my toolbar. Let me show you how you can show those tools. If for whatever reason your toolbar is not showing those tools, all you have to do is to click on these three dots at the bottom where it says edit toolbar 
And then on the fly menu at the very top, and I'm going to keep zooming in so you can see what I'm doing here and make sure that you have advanced selected. Otherwise, if you have a basic selected, look what happens. That's how yours should look like. You still have the shapes. It's still a restricted um, option, but I wanted to show you why mine was longer. You can always edit these tools, uh, but I will recommend you to uh, just click here on these three dots. And again, I'm going to zoom in just right here, oops, up here. And if you click on these three dots, then you can go ahead and click on the fly menu and make sure that advanced is selected. And you can edit those as well and just perhaps create a bespoke toolbar with the tools that you just need. Um, but I think that Illustrator has done a pretty good job in splitting the basic and the advanced. And we're gonna be exploring different tools today. So make sure that you trigger the advanced so you can have a play with me with all different tools. Fazla is saying, thank you for explaining so clearly. Well, it's my pleasure. And if I don't, please ask a question and ask me to clarify. I'm here to help. As I say, this is a fantastic safe space to learn for all of us. I'm, I'm growing so much as a designer. I learn from you guys all the time and from your questions. So keep them coming so we can explore uh, the wonderful Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And you will see today how with very simple steps and the very basics, you'll be able to create very professional output. So let's get started with our illustration. I'm going to go ahead and click and hold under my rectangle tool here on my side toolbar in order to showcase the rest of our shapes. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool. You can also select the ellipse tool by pressing the letter L on your keyboard. Then all you have to do is to click and drag on your keyboard in order to uh, design an artboard. And when you have a perfect circle, uh, sorry, in order to design an ellipse. When you, when you see the little uh, lines coming up, which are these pink vertical and horizontal lines, what that tells us that is a perfect circle. If you want to make sure that you scale it while you keep the constraint proportion of a perfect circle, all you have to do is to hold on on the shift key into your keypad. So as you can see now, I'm holding shift and I'm just making the circle bigger and smaller. And if I let go, it becomes back to an ellipse. Now, we don't necessarily need a specific circle here, so I'm just going to click and drag and release in order to draw, uh, to draw my ellipse, which is going to be the initial sh shapes, the face of our cat. Something else that I enjoy doing, and if you have downloaded uh, the starter file here, you'll see is to have just another artboard in which I place all the different elements. Um, you don't necessarily need to have an artboard. Uh, you can just paste it on top, but I think that is nice every time that you do one step to kind of create a copy, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Arokia is just joined us in the chat. Hi, thank you so much for being here with us. So what I'm going to do here is to start to play with this circle. And uh, now, as you can see, we are, have a, a black arrow that allow us to select elements. So uh, with the black arrow, I can select the circle or the rectangle here. Um, if I want to change from selecting the entire element to the single anchor point, all you have to do is to press on the letter A. And as you can see, the uh, arrow changes into a white color. So this is the selection tool. And if you press A, this is the direct selection tool. So as you can see, it will allow us to select each single point inside our path. Claudia, can you explain how to export colors from Illustrator and Photoshop? Yes, Sandra, we're going to be talking about that in just a second. Um, so we're going to just creating our shapes. And then actually, I'm going to be using um, our assets in order to, to show how to export colors. Uh, we're going to be using the libraries and we're also going to be using uh, um, Illustrator swatches. Fantastic. So I'm going to go back into my new file and I'm going to click and drag down uh, this top little corner. And as you can see, the reason why I swapped between the selection tool and the direct selection tool, which you can also find here, which is the second little tool, is because we can operate on each single point at the time. And also, once we uh, click on this little point, you can see that we have this handle coming up. And those handles are very helpful in uh, allowing us to um, change the shape of the curves. So as you can see here, if I drag down this little handle 
and I hold shift in order to keep the same vertical axis. All it does is change the shapes of the bottom of the curve and it doesn't bother the top one. If I want to change the top one, all I would have to do is to uh, have a play with the top um, handle, but I'm not going to be used that using that yet. So I'm going to do the same here. And the reason why I am um, changing the shape is because I want to make sure that we really get the Joe and the little square kitty face face here. Fantastic. So we already created one shape, which we're going to be using for the face. And uh, what I'm going to do is to go back and on my selection tool by pressing B on my keyboard or finding it here. And then by holding option on Mac, that's alt on Windows, as you can see, let me zoom in so you can see even better, the arrow changes again. So now we have a black arrow and a white arrow behind. That means that we are ready to create a copy. In fact, with our object selected, if we now click and drag, we are automatically moving away an exact copy of the shape that we've created, just like so. Fantastic. So let's explore another tool now in order to create the ears. So in order to create the ears, we have different options. Um, one of them is to create a shapes or uh, we can also uh, play a little bit with our pen tool. Um, our pen tool is one of our basics tool in Illustrator because it allows us to create path uh, that are bespoke. So we can literally click in, in order to create a point and then drag it wherever we want in order to uh, create another point. All you have to do is to click and then um, another thing you can do is to keep going until you close your path. Now, something super cool, if you perhaps clicked, but you have not reached the right position. So for example, here I was placing uh, this point outside. All you have to do is hit the space bar and look what happens. Even if you already create a point, you can move it around. So I'm actually going to leave it here into our path. And then I'm going to click here in order to uh, close my uh, path. But before doing so, I want to show you how do you create those beautiful handles that allow us to create curves from straight lines. So in this case, once I click in order to create my point, then all I have to do is to drag outside. So you can see, look at my little arrow moving away from our um, little anchor point in order to create this angle. Now, the reason why we only have one handle is because we did not create uh, one before. So I was just clicking. I wasn't click and dragging, um, but you can always create an anchor point. In fact, all you have to do is to make sure that you're working with the pen tool. And then all you have to do is hold the option key on a Mac that's alt on Windows. And look what happens. Our little pen tool transforms into a corner. So if you click once, it's going to create a, a, a sharp corner. But if you click and hold, it's going to reveal these lovely um, handles. And as you can see, if we squeeze them in, we can loop the shape. And if we put them out, we can actually start to create our curves. And also you can hold the option key to move just one of our lovely handles. So I hope everything is clear so far. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to let them know. And uh, I'm going to show you now how you can once you create this little here, how can we duplicate the shape in on the other side in a symmetric way, just in few clicks. So, uh, and again, this is a time saving techniques. You can totally draw another here using the pen tool exactly like we did, but I'm here to show you time saving techniques in order to, for you to learn how to use illustrator in the most efficient way. So once you created your shapes, what I will do first of all is to again, create a copy. So alt option and drag, and there we go. We just created a copy. Then I'm going to go back and select my object and head here under our rotate tool, you find the reflect tool. So if you're wondering, how do I bring this panel? Well, that's very simple. It just, instead of clicking, I click and hold on the tool with my mouse and then you just have to select the reflect tool. Then double click in order to bring up the reflect option panel. And here it is. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little better. 
And as you can see, it's already showing us what does it do. So if we flip it horizontal, so we're just imagine like have only horizontal imaginary line and we can flip it from the top to the bottom. While if we click on vertical, imagine we have a vertical line here so we can literally flip it. And then you can also rotate it of any angle that you want, just like so. In this case, I'm just going to be flipping vertical. So if I unclick the preview, this is the original position and that's what I'm going to do. So literally flipping on uh, the uh, vertical axis. Now, because I want another one of these objects, I don't want to flip this one. I need another here because the kitty has got two ears. So instead of clicking on OK, make sure to click preview to make sure that we are selecting the correct one. And instead of uh, clicking on OK, I'm going to click on copy and look what happens. We have duplicated the object and at the same time we created a reflected um, image of the object. So we reflect it and duplicate it in just one click using the reflect tool that is hidden here under the rotate tool in our panel. And I'm going to zoom in so you can have a better look of the way that it looks like. Pretty easy and easier under the rotate tool. Okay, fantastic. So now that we create a duplicate, all we have to do is either uh, go back here in our selection tool or press V into your keyboard and we're going to be moving it to the right. You can also move it to the right um, either with your mouse or um, let's see if you if you drag it with your mouse in order to keep the same line. All you have to do is to uh, hold on shift. And as you can see, I cannot go up and down. I can just go left and right. Uh, or you can use the left arrows, left and right arrows into your keyboard. And if you hold shift with your arrows, you just increment the moves more. So let's see what happens. So if I select my object and just click on the left arrow, it just do small movements. But look what happens if I hold on shift and select uh, the left arrow, he moves much, much faster. I see Alberto in the chat. What's up? How are you, my friend? Nice to see you here. Nice to for join. Thank you so much for joining me. Alberto, what time is it where you're from? I think you're in Miami. Let me see if I remember well. Nor, where are you from? You probably told me already a few times, but I don't remember. <laughs> so please let us know in the chat because you also changed name a while ago. So I, I do remember that. Um, let us know what time in the day it is and where you are, where you're fault, where you are tuning in from. Fantastic. So we got our little ears and we're moving towards our uh, kidding is coming together. Perhaps what I want to do is to make the face a little bit more squished just to make it even cuter. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag from the bottom. And in this case, I am using my uh, selection tool, which is the black arrow. Fantastic. Looks like we have our little kitty coming together. And so Alberto is saying, nice to see you back in here, Claddy. It's 11.02 in sunny Fort Lauderdale. Oh, no, that's why I forgot, because I'm jealous. You're in the Mauritius. Oh, it's wonderful, 7 p.m. I look forward to see your profile if you have any, any photo of the Mauritius. I would love to go. It's my dream. Uh, Catherine says it's 4 p.m. in south of London. Catherine, we're on the same time zone. I'm in Manchester, UK, so it's 4 p.m. here as well. Alessandro Follino is saying Italy. Woohoo! Yes, we're about in Italy, Alessandro. And of course, ciao and benvenuto. So I can do some Italian. Usually we have Steve Festus here in the chat that is dubbing our Adobe Lives with Italian lessons. Um, I'm definitely going to go and send him a message because we missed him today. Right, so it looks like the beginning of our shapes are starting to um, get in together. And now you realize why I created a copy. Because now that we have three different shapes, so we got the two ears and the face, I'm going to just simply in one click create one single shape out of them. All you have to do is to click and drag in order to select them all. And then once you go ahead into your properties panel, if you scroll down, you'll find a tool called Pathfinder. Here it is. And the very first option is to unite. So if you click once, look what happens. In one click, we have our little shape combined. We have uh, Alessandro, 
Um, oh, it says great pronunciation. I'm Italian, of course. I'm from Lecce, the south of Italy in Puglia. Uh, let me know where you're from. Um, Soel is from Bangladesh. Thank you so much for joining us, Soel from Bangladesh. And we have Peshang from Kurdistan, north of Iraq. I love this. So we have Fort Lauderdale, London, Mauritius, Italy, Bangladesh, UK, North Iraq. That's amazing. I love how international these streams are. That's something that really gets me excited if you <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Fantastic. So um, we have created our little shape of um, our cat. RB, nice to see you. Welcome in the chat. And I see that Alberto is welcoming you with our what's up. And uh, also we have Katarina saying, Katarina saying hello to uh, RB. RB, we missed you. Hamed is saying hi from Egypt. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining from all these beautiful places. Oh, we have a lot of people from the UK. We have got Harry Annan also from the UK. And um, Alessandro is from Milan. F fantastic. I spent four years in Milan studying and I miss it dearly. It's a wonderful, wonderful city. Great. So how do we swap now the color that is on the stroke, which is this black outline here and put it inside in just a few clicks because we want to learn the basics of Illustrator, but we want to learn uh, professional basics of Illustrator. So uh, you can always go here, just up here on the fill and stroke. And I'm going to zoom in to show you these lovely best friends of yours. Once you're going to be starting working in Illustrator, the fill is the color that is inside the shapes, while the stroke is the outline. So as you can see, we got this shape selected and the fill is going to be white while the stroke is going to be black. But look what happens if I use one of our fantastic shortcuts. So first shocker shortcut is Shift X. So Shift X, X allows you to swap between the uh, outlines, between the stroke and the fill. So now we have the black inside and the white outside. Then if I want to um, use a particular one, so in this case, I've got the fill selected because it's on top. What if you want to select the stroke? Well, you can always go ahead and click on it. So you can select the stroke or select the fill, or we can use another shortcut, which is the letter X, in order to make sure that we select either or. So now first thing we did is to place, swap the content um, in black. So we swapped the color between the stroke and the fill with shift X. Then we just use X to bring up the stroke in order to select it. And then we're going to use the backslash in order to create a transparent fill, which is this one here with the um, with the red line. You can also access it by simply clicking here on this um, icon that has the same white square uh, with the line. And we can also, for example, look what happens if I now want to make the stroke black and uh, the feel transparent again, shift X and we did it. And of course it looks white because we are on an artboard, but if I move it outside, you can see that that's what happening. But I'm going to bring it back because I want our feel to be black and our stroke to be transparent. So shift X and we are done. Of course, uh, you can always do that by clicking and then double clicking to select multiple colors here from your color picker. We're going to be talking about color in a second. I know Sandra is there holding on learning how to export colors, but we're going to look into that into a second. Fantastic. I can see Asus Ramirez in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us, Asus. Good morning. And I can see everyone is saying hello hi to Asus. And I'm going to go back and see what you guys are talking about because I was a bit lost into the stroke and feel. Oh, Tim is saying that Asus knows a thing or two about Photoshop. Yeah, I heard that. I think so. I'm just joking. I call Asus Ramirez the Photoshop walking encyclopedia. Like he knows pretty much nearly everything that's got to be possible knowing about Photoshop. Even thing that I didn't know that existed. And um, oh, RB is saying, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Asus is saying that he knows at least two things. Yeah, just a couple, just a couple. Nor says that you make the cut brown and add some chocolate bits on it and it becomes a cookie. Oh, my, that's very cute. Well, before the making a, cu uh, a cookie, Nor, we're going to make an anima animation. And I'm going to, since I'm looking at the chat, I also want to say hi to Alexandra Pessoa. Hi, Alexandra. 
where are you typing from let us know we were asking everyone to to let us know where they were from in the chat so let us know tim says probably knows all the 1017 pages of the photoshop 2019 pdf by heart tim i know that he knows things that is not even in there so next time you should be writing it we want asus ramirez to write that new photoshop ps uh, photoshop 2000, 2020 because it comes up sometimes with things just by exploring photoshop and that's the beauty of those apps and that's why i always say use those safe space at adobe live in order to learn because we learn even as professional we've been working for years with these apps but just by practicing creating new things that's how you unlearn and learn and, and stumble into new um into new techniques and to new, in new ways of using creative ways of using uh, the tools and that's another amazing reason why there are so many of us here streaming because everyone uses the tools into a different way what i'm doing here today in this getting started to present you all the tools and how to work with them but then you can take them with you and build your own workflow but let's keep going uh ciao bixio from rome Bixio da Roma, ciao, benvenuto. So I'm saying hi in Italian to everyone just because I speak Italian. So <laughs> I probably can do it in Spanish and in just a few other languages, but not much. Raimundo, greetings from Mexico. Thanks for pizza and cappuccino. Yes, I wish. I would love a pizza and cappuccino right now. Fantastic. So let's keep going and let's keep building the eyes of our little cats. And for those of you that are joining just now, Keith, nice to see you here in the chat. I'm going to just jump back real quick into the resources website. So it's iamcloudy.com slash resources to show you what we are looking to create today. We got about an hour. I'm sure that we are going to do it um, just about. We're definitely going to do the eyes animation and the star and the name. We're going to try to get it all done uh, so that's what we're building today right now we just made the shape of the face then we're going to focus on creating the eyes the nose then we're going to be working on the color and moving everything into photoshop seamlessly okay so let's create those eyes i'm going to jump back in here into the toolbar if you weren't following before in order to um define the ellipse you can use the letter l into your keyboard or simply click and hold under the rectangle tool in order to bring the ellipse tool then let's click and drag in order to create the ellipse that will be the eyes and in this case we're going to double click or click once into the field and then click onto the uh, color white under the color panel if you don't know where the color panel is uh, click under window and then select it over here so you'll be able to find it every single panel in alphabetical order under the window menu fantastic so that's all we need for now for the the basic eye probably we need to make it a little tiny smaller and a way you can make your design smaller is to click and drag with your black selection tool or you can use shift if you want to scale the proportionally so if you're happy about the size of the shape but you're not happy about the size of the object and you just want to resize it proportionally make sure to hold shift and here it is you're making it bigger and smaller while if you're not happy with the shape of the ellipse you do not have to hold shift and you can see you can scale it but also modify the ellipse fantastic i think we got it now once we made our uh, first eye we're gonna go ahead and create another ellipse and in this case i'm gonna make it black oops I need to make it first and I'm going to make it much smaller and thinner just like so because that's going to be the inside part of the eye that is going to move I believe it's called pupil in English is going to be moving from left to right Shirley is joining us from St. Petersburg Florida Shirley nice to see you Alexander I say your name perfectly that doesn't happen very often so I'm glad I did I'm not going to repeat it again just in case I say it wrong but let us know where you're from and thank you so much for being here with us so now that i created this new shape i'm gonna go ahead and click on the color black in order to change the fill and then i'm gonna go back into my ellipse tool and create a small circle so i'm holding shift in order to make sure that is a perfect circle and then i'm gonna place it here on the side so look what happens if you want to go back into the outline so we're just gonna forget all these fields and stroke and we just want to realize what we've drawn so far a way of doing that and switch view is to use a shortcut which is command y command y will allow you to swap mode and this is the outline mode so all we see 
are outlines. And then if we press it again, remember Command Y on Mac, that's Control Y on Windows, um, you go back into your normal view. And by the way, I just bought a PC. So right now I'm using my MacBook, uh, but I'm gonna be starting to work from my PC. I'm very super excited. Let me know in the chat, PC user or Mac user? I'm really, really eager to know. For now, I'm gonna be uh, using both, but um, I wanna know what the majority of you guys use it. So let me know in the chat. Right, I'm gonna zoom in. And in order to zoom in, I'm gonna use the shortcut Command and Space. And look what happened. I can zoom in, oops. So first of all, Siri is coming up. <laughs> uh, but then if I hold them both, Command and Space bar at the same time, instead of the selection tool, we have our little um, zoom icon that allow us to zoom in into our design. So now we see that we have created these two little ellipse and a circle. All I have to do is uh, to um, remove this area. So how do I do that? Uh, <laughs> Tim is saying a PC on Adobe Live is an heresy. Tim, are you a PC user? I think you are. I don't remember. I think you are. We know Ahmed is a PC user. Nor's on both, now only Mac, Kimberly Mac, Henry, PC always, that's not even a question. Alberto is doing the same thing that I'm doing, eventually moving to PC. Java's Mac. Yes, Keith, I agree. So that's exactly the reason why I dropped into PC. And since um, a Swiss from here is here, I need to give him a fantastic shout because he was there helping me piecing together. I think we spent like about one hour piecing together all the little parts of the computer. Tim is saying, I love the power of my PC and the OS of my Macs. I absolutely agree. I think I'm going to keep using both. So let me introduce you another tool. And I want to talk with, to you about the Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool is this tool over here. It's got two circles with three dot, few dots inside. I don't know if there are three or maybe more. And then a white arrow. And um, that's exactly what it does. It allows you to uh, create new shapes. So make sure that you select both shapes that you wanna modify and change into a new shapes. And then go ahead and click on the Shape Builder tool. And look what happens. We have an arrow with a plus. So um, if we click just right there and then look what happened, we can actually add shapes. So in this case, we will change all these shapes into one single shape, just like so. But that's not what I want. So I'm gonna press Command Z in order to undo. That's Control Z on Windows to undo. And look what happens here. If I want to subtract the shape, so we wanna change this little uh, plus sign into a minus, all you have to do is to hold the Option key on Mac, that's Alt on Windows, and let's go back into our shapes and select the areas that we want to subtract. So this is the one that I want to subtract over here. Here it is. So we literally subtracted the circle from the ellipse and we had this perfect shape uh, concave uh, circle inside, which is gonna look amazing for our little kitten's eyes. Now all we have to do is to bring it inside our eye and here it is, one eye is ready to go. Now all we have to do is to start working uh, with our nose and our mouth. And I'm just gonna keep using shapes in order to build an illustration. Uh, no is saying PC, Mac, whatever. One day I'll be, uh, we'll, we'll all be the machines connected to the cloud. I completely agree. Um, can't wait until the time that we're gonna have to like just use contact lenses instead of screens. And we're gonna have, I think that there, um, I, know, I know a few people, I think two people's already that have their data storage in their skin. So like literally they can read, they can scan their data directly from their end, which is, like mind blowing, but that's the future. It's coming. You're absolutely right, Nor. Surely saying that we are in a PC. Laura Staneva, Laura, nice to see you. Um, she uses Windows, but planning to try out Mac too. Well, they're both pretty good. I think that, um, you know, like depends. I would definitely will ever keep my MacBook because it works fantastically with my iPad and my phone. Uh, but I think it, there is also a value of having a strong PC in terms of having a powerhouse machine uh, at a bit less money. And you can also, as I believe um, Nor was saying, or let me see who was saying, someone was saying that you can, you can make it the way you want. You can literally, um, yeah, Keith was saying that you can modify the way you want. 
exactly okay fantastic so let's move on and create the nose because then we have just about um sometimes to move into our uh, photoshop to create the animation moving the eyes left to right and doing some different other transformations so i'm gonna go back into my ellipse tool click and drag in order to create a little circle and all the shift to create a perfect circle reverb is asking ctrl j so ctrl j is used to uh join points paths but let me know let me know what is that question maybe i missed i'm i missed some questions uh reverb feel free to uh tell me a little bit more so i'll be able to help you out with that pedro enrique is saying help how can we help let us know pedro um and after creating this little circle i'm gonna click and alt and head to the start tool and as you can see if you click and drag we have a start but we can um have more add more sides to our stars or take off some sides up to having only three sides and creating our lovely triangle and then holding shift to make sure that we have it right into position yeah harry insane Pedro, help with what? We're here to help. We are a wonderful community here at Adobe Live. We like to help each other, but you need to let us know how we can help and we'll be very happy to do so. So as you can see, what I've done is uh, drag down from our corner or the bounding box and hold shift in order to keep my triangle of the same proportion. And I'm gonna place it here under the little nose. So the last thing that is left to do is the little mouth. So I'm gonna use uh, the circle in order to do so. Alt option on Mac, that's Alt on Windows to create a copy. Then I'm gonna make sure that all these elements are aligned by clicking and dragging in order to select them all. And here under the properties panel, we have our aligned options and I'm gonna make sure that we align to selection. If you want to align to a specific item, all you have to do is to click once. So in this case, we will align respectively to the triangle and then one to the circle, all these other circles. So in this case, I'm gonna choose the top circle as a main reference point, and I'm gonna to click to align horizontally to make sure that everything is aligned. I'll do it. Um, those questions are a little short. If you guys can please expand on uh, the topic, on whatever you're asking, i am be more than happy to reply. Fantastic. So let's, be, let's, keep, let's keep going. And Sandra, I hope you're still tuning in because we're just about to jump into colors right now and how to export colors. So fantastic. Once you have created your new circle, all you have to do is to um, click and drag the top point in order to create almost this uh, uh, longer ellipse. And then I'm going to click and drag on the side while holding shift in order to um, create a change and uh, make it larger on both sides. So look what happened. If I do not hold option, it just moves on one side, but if I hold option, it moves from the center. So both sides are, op are opening up. Okay, Sandra says, can you repeat the start, please? Of course I can. Let's go back into our start. And once you click and drag, well, now let me go back to what you will normally have. You will normally have a five pointed star just like so so in order to reduce the number of sides all you have to do is to press on a down pointing arrow on your keyboard so here we go less sides and if you want an increment you use the top pointing arrow on the keyboard so you see many sides less sides until when you get to three and then to make sure that you're positioning your rectangle um, in a straight position all you have to do is to hold shift and here it is illustrator just kind of straightens that up for you sandra let me know if that's um that's clear enough i'm gonna keep going in the meantime to create another shape using the shape builder and again i'm gonna click and drag to select my shape and then click on the shape builder and holding the the, the minus we can um delete those shapes so look what happened the entire um ellipse disappeared and that happens very often so we need to be very careful when you do that i'm going to press command z to undo and let me explain you why that happened so i'm going to go back into outline mode using the command y that's control y on windows and if you really 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 zoom in you can see that the path path are not touching so if i go ahead and delete this side 
because it's communicating with this bottom side of the ellipse, it will also be deleted. So I would really always advise you to zoom in as much as you can because it happens, happens very often, even to the most, um, you know, worked professionals to have this sort of mistake. So zoom in. And in this case, all I have to do is to select my um, little rectangle and by uh, holding option, we can make it bigger just like so. So it intersects our shape. Can you see the difference here? So now it's actually coming a little bit out. We can also bring it in. The most important thing is the actually intersects the line. Uh, so that was before and that's after. So let's make sure that it also intersects on the other side. I'm going to zoom out. And of course, like those lines are super thin. So you really, really have to zoom in to make sure that um, that's working fine. Fantastic. So look what happens now. I'm going to go back to our normal view uh, with command Y. So Alessandro, I can see your chat in Italian and I completely understand it, but in all fairness, please, can you write in English? Uh, because this is an English only chat. I can translate at the meantime. So Alessandro is asking if there is a way uh, to make the distance between the, um, the point of the star smaller. Um, that is not is not sure how to explain that. Um, so basically what Alessandro is saying, if there is a way to make the distance between the points smaller. Well, the only way of doing it is again by using our selection tool. Alessandro, please then keep our uh, chat in English, but uh, um, hopefully I translated uh, well for, for everyone. Alessandro is asking how to um, make it smaller. So the best way to do so is to use our selection tool and in this case, what I'm doing is to use option to uh, make the base smaller. Otherwise, when you um, when you use a star or a triangle, um, you can you, the the shape it will go in and out by adding more sides. Um, we're going to talk about another tool, which perhaps I can show you right now. Um, let, let me just finish off with this and I'll show you another tool that perhaps can satisfy better uh, your question. So um, let's go back to the stage where we had those uh, little corner go across because I think that I got a little bit lost. So again, make sure that they touch the stroke. So now we can select them. And when we go back to our shape builder tool, you can see that we have isolated the top shapes. So by holding option on Mac, and alt on windows we can delete those two shapes and with plus we can unite those shape perfect let's go back to our command uh, y or control y and let's click once to make this shape black and here we have it so we have our little nose and our little mouse and all we had was using circle triangle and um, ellipses Um, yes, Alessandro, I know what you're asking and we're going to jump back into it in a second. Uh, Imran is saying that he's waiting for the animation part is going to start in one minute. Okay, Imran, fantastic. So the most important thing in order to start, um, the, the most important thing for this, um, to, to start the animation is to have the element. So that's what we were doing in Illustrator. So we have our cat, we have our uh, eyes, we can probably make it a little smaller. And again, hold the shift in order to constrain proportion and hold option in order to duplicate. And then we have our little nose and mouth, which I'm going to make of a, a little pinkish color. Probably that's too magenta, but here it is. So I'm going to duplicate by holding shift and definitely make this smaller, just like so. And here it is. So, oops, I want to group those, press click and drag on, on both to select both shapes and press command G to group them so you can move them together just like so. So fantastic. We do have our little cat. Uh, let's start moving on and bring um, our elements into Photoshop to start the animation. So what I'm going to do here is also to create a background and I'm going to go ahead and click under my rectangle tool and create a click once in order to intersect the very top of our artboard. And I'm going to insert the same um, size that we did at the beginning, which was 1080 by 1080 and click on OK. And in this case, I'm going to use a different color. 
um, maybe something that is more like of a salmon pink, just something like that. Because cat eats a lot of salmon, so I think that's why I'm going with this color scheme here. Definitely my cat Frida. Um, uh, my cat Frida definitely does definitely eats a lot of salmon, so that's why I'm probably inspired to the salmon. Reverb is asking, can we just make all of these in Photoshop? Well, you could, but there are so many advantages in using Illustrator, and I'm gonna show you in just a second. First of all, Photoshop um, items are rasterized while with our wonderful vector we can scale them infinitely so there is a, a lot of value in creating a vector file rather than a, a shape in illustrator and let's start to import all of these items inside our libraries if you don't know what i'm talking about make sure to head into our windows menu and then um, libraries to open your libraries panel and click on the down pointing arrow and click on create new library to open a new library. I'm gonna call this one animation cat and click on create. Then uh, first thing that I'm gonna do is to respond to uh, Sandra question regarding the colors. So first of all, I'm gonna click and drag to on top of all my design and then I'm gonna bring up my swatches panel here and click on this little folder uh, which asks to create a color group. I'm gonna call this one cat animation and then make sure that selected artwork is uh, ticked. So basically we're gonna pick up all the color from the selected artwork and click on OK. And as you can see we are created on the swatches a group with the color that we are using. Now in order to export it and have them available into our Photoshop all we have to do is to click here on this little icon where it says add selected swatches and color groups to my current library. So look what happened. We have created our library. Now if we, with our group selected, click once, here they are. Sandra, they are ready to be used. Also, if you want to export it, you can click on the fly menu and save it as watch library as an ACE file or uh, as an illustrator file. So those are also way in which you can export just the color. Okay, fantastic. Um, so uh, once you, we exported the color, the second thing to export will be the face and the little white part of the eyes. Now let's make sure that those are actually centered. So I'm just gonna select the white eye and the head and the mouth, and I'm gonna go under properties and make sure that those are all aligned to the center. And then I'm going to bring it to the back using the shortcut command shift left curly bracket. And I'm going to move the background away for now. So once I select those, you can see the head is moving. What I want to select is the head, the white part of the eyes and the nose and mouth. And then I'm going to, with our library selected, if I right click and, uh, and add into the library, we can click and drag. Oops in order to add this shape to the library. Then we can select both the eyes and let's make sure that we get them to the right position first here. So we just will have an idea then in Photoshop and we can also click and drag them. Another way to uh, import, um, for example, if you just want to import the nose and mouth into your library is to create, uh, is to simply click onto um, the little shape and then right click and then uh, click on to add to library. And as you can see, it gets also added to the library. Uh, now, before we jump into the illustration, one more thing I wanted to do is to add some text. So let's go back into our type tool and click once in order to create uh, our type. And I'm gonna call this one fur baby. I'm gonna hold shift to make sure that everything is capital. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my properties panels in order to select a character. A font that I'm using uh, very often is uh, this integral CF and I'm probably gonna select um, an extra bold. Fantastic. Then I'm gonna click option to create a copy and use the shortcut shift command O to outline the text. You can also do that by going into um, type and um, create outlines, which is our shift command O uh, or shift control O in Windows. Now by holding shift, I'm going to drag it out to scale it. So I have a decent size of uh, our type 
and I'm going to right click and add also this to the library. Now let's see what happens. An animated cat. What is she making? Oh, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Sayan is asking, uh, what is she making? And Nora is saying an animated cat. Yes. So let's jump into Photoshop because we got uh, 30 minutes to build the illustration. Sandra, let me know if it was um, very clear how you exported your, your colors. As you see, we have them right here. So we'll be able to use them. And uh, I believe it was Henry asking why we're using Illustrator. Well, I'm going to show you real quick why it's so super fun to use Illustrator and create these graphic resizable assets that you can always modify because we will be linked to your, um, to your uh, Creative Cloud libraries. So I'm going to jump into Illustrator and I'm going to uh, go back into our home, click on Create New. And I'm going to use the same size, which is our uh, Instagram post. So animated cat will be the name of the file and the size will be 1080 by 1080 pixels. And we have pixels as measurements. I'm going to untick artboards because I'm just going to use one single artboard. Usually I suggest to keep that ticked when you have to create more than one assets. Uh, but in this case, we just need one. So I'm just going to untick it for now and click on create. And we have the same artboard of the same size. So I'm going to start by uh, creating an adjustment with a solid color. And uh, that's exactly the color that we wanted. And that's because I was using it before. But what I wanted to show you is that because we have imported the colors into our library, you can actually with your color selected, you can literally jump into the solid color and select the color from your library. So those are exactly the same colors that we created into Photoshop into Illustrator, sorry. Then I'm going to click and drag in order to bring in our little cut shape and click on return in order to accept the change. I'm going to uh, go back into the chat to see if there is, there is any other question. Martha is saying interesting use of the library. Blanca is saying hello, Sam. Oh, Sam Peterson, nice to see you. Angelo Carrillo. Hola, guapa from Guatemala. Hola, Angelo. Um, Sandra saying very clear regarding the color. Fantastic. Great, great. We're on time. Perfect. So I just realized that I was using the libraries that I created for my little practice, which has got the face of the cat that is, the, that is um, like almost chopped in the middle. Uh, but I want to stay truth to our workflow and use the library that we created together. So I'm going to click here on a down pointing arrow and click to the animation cat library, which is the one that we just created. In fact, we also have this lovely pink that we used for the nose, which could also be a color of your background. But look, Sandra, super cool. We can just use them right away in Photoshop just because we have loaded to our libraries from Illustrator. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and import my little cut face and click on return. And then I'm going to import the eyes. And the first thing that I'm going to do before starting the animation is to just kind of like create a composition first, like having a first starting point. So with both our layers selected, I'm going to start to name those layers just so things don't get messy here. In order to name your layers, all you have to do is to double click and use that um, your keyboard to rename your layers. So this one will be cut face and this is going to be eyes. And then of course, this one is the background backdrop. Fantastic. So notice what happened for those of you that never used the libraries before. When I do drag in one element into my library, uh, what happens is that Photoshop automatically creates a layer. Now I'm going to double click into it and, um, Called that logo and look what happens for example if i'm not happy with the brand being uh, black and i want to change it into white look what happens we can literally double click from our libraries and we'll have the file opening into illustrator and uh, from there we can change the color so here it is double clicking on the library we change this for example into white and then press command s to save and let's jump back into photoshop and look what happens Boom, it's white. So all the elements that you have imported into your um, Illustrator, into your library as a graphic elements from Illustrator, they are forever editable until they are connected to the library. So you can see that by this little cloud shape. When you break the link, they, they will not update. They can update into the library, but not into your layers. 
Okay, fantastic. So it looks like we got all the elements. It's time to bring in the timeline panel to make things move in time. Okay, so perhaps another thing that I want to do is to uh, center the cat. So I'm just going to hold shift and select both layers. And then I'm going to make sure that those are centered. It looks like the cat is centered. Here it is. Fantastic. And then um, let's bring it a little bit lower over here. And I'm going to press command T to transform in order to make them bigger. Remember in Photoshop, we do not need to hold uh, that uh, little shift key because it's already scaling pro proportionally, but we can hold option in order to scale it to the center. So I think that's kind of cute. That's the end result that we want. Okay, fantastic. And I'm going to bring the eyes to one side to start with. Great. We're ready to go with the animation. Maybe a tad little smaller. Sorry, I'm just being very particular. Here it is. I just want to see a little bit of background. So I'm going to head into my window panel and select timeline. Then click on create video timeline. And the first thing that you want to notice is that here on the timeline panel, we have a replica of our layers. So everything that is here under the timeline, eyes, cut face, logo, backdrop is exactly what we have here. So that is telling us that each single layer becomes a frame. So those are frames in the exact same order of the layer. Photoshop makes it very easy for us. Then something that is also very important to uh, become familiar with is this purple line, which is the timeline. So we can move in time. And that's exactly what this little fella with a blue head and a red line allow us to do. This is called playhead and the playhead allow us to move in time. And as you can see, we have all these little uh, green building up. So this is just letting us know that Photoshop is caching the information. So you will see that the animation will get will go slower or faster. So um, Marta is saying if you move the original Illustrator file will show it missing. It is embedded. Marta, it is embedded. In fact, looks what happened when you put a, a graphic in into your libraries, it belongs to your libraries. In fact, if I double click on these items, it just opened the graphics itself. It doesn't go back to the original file that I created, which was um, this one over here, but it opens the graphic itself. Okay, so here you can, um, you know, select it, change color, maybe resize it, do all the edits that you want to do, then press, oops, then press command S to save. And when we go back into our Photoshop, it changed color and everything because we are working on the graphic itself. Fantastic. It's time to move those eyes. So let's start with our transformation. In order to uh, select the frame, so in this case, we're looking at the eyes. All you have to do is to click on this down pointing arrow. And as I was saying, we have the playhead that allow us to move us in time and those purple line, which are the time. So the further you go to the right, the further you go into the future. And the starting point is time zero. So at time zero, we want the position of the eye, which is our first option here into the animation to stay where they are. So all you have to do is to click on the time stop in order to enable the first keyframe. And if you don't know what is a keyframe, is this little gold diamond here. So this is telling us at this time that is selected by the playhead, the position is going to be right there. Then I'm going to move the playhead to um, a little bit more in, in the future. And what I'm going to do is to move the eyes to the other side. And bear in mind, I'm holding shift. So is not moving up and down, but it's just moving horizontally. And look what happens. Photoshop has already created another keyframe. So look what happened here. The eyes are already going from left to right. So at time zero, the position is set to the right. And uh, at this other time, we have this other keyframe saying that the position is on the other side. The tool of animation of Illustrator is the same like Photoshop, some changes. I never use il animation in Illustrator Angelo. So um, I'm not sure how you use il il uh, animation in Illustrator, but let me know. Also, um, sorry, I missed the part of how to bring the animation window, the timeline. Not a problem, Peshang. All you have to do is to go under window and then click on timeline. And here you have it. The timeline appears. So 
so oh we have a lot of questions so i don't know about animation illustrator i've never done it i doubt that you can do illustration in uh, animation in illustrator or simply i never done it i love the simplicity of photoshop and i can see raimondo uh, mentioning after effects F after effects is much more complex so the things that you can do here one is to create difference in position so here it is we have left to right and also look what happens if you want the movement to happen faster you move the keyframe closer to each other. So look, I'm going to press the space bar to move and it moves like so. Well, look what happens if I move the second keyframe in the future, the movement, it goes so slow. So we want to have that movement happen a few times. So I'm going to bring it back and also I'm going to click and drag to select both of the keyframe or simply select them by holding shift and right click and copy them. Then I'm going to move again a little bit forward in time, create another position keyframe, right click and paste. And we're going to have exactly the same animation up in again and again. Here it is. We can do that maybe another time. So again, move the um, little playhead in the future and then click to the little diamond to create a new time frame, uh, keyframe and right click and paste. So you don't have to do it again. You already done it. So it's basically moving left to right, left to right. Fantastic. So perhaps something that we wanted to do is to bring the cat heads up. I completely forgot about that. Um, but let's see if to do that into a second. I first want to show you something that is another way of using the position, which is the transform. Now, in order to change position into transform and do a little bit more of a complex um, animation is to create a smart object. So I'm going to right click into the layer and convert it into a smart object. And as you can see, once I open the down pointing arrow, position change into transform. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to move the logo higher up where we can see it. Here it is. Um, and let's see why well, we're not seeing our logo here gonna bring it in perfect so this is our logo I don't know what happened to that one and I'm going to again right click and transform into a smart object in order to be able to um, use the transform so I'm gonna move in forward in time if I want this to be my final position of the logo I'm gonna click on the uh, stop uh, on the time stop in order to create the first transform keyframe then I'm gonna move back in time and I'm going to press Command T to transform and I'm going to make this logo smaller and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to bring it outside of the artboard and then I'm going to click on return and look what happens when I press play It's going to rotate, come in and then become of the right size. Perfect. So it looks exactly like we created a transformation. So the eyes are moving, the logo is moving. Now it's something else. Um, Eddie is asking, waiting to check out export options. Well, let me show you something else. I know we got like literally five minutes. I want to show you another option, uh, which is uh, um, the opacity. So in this case, I'm just going to create, um, let's see, this little nose over here, or let's go back and let's go back into Illustrator and create just a little dots that we can use as a star, here it is, in order to show the opacity. And I'll make it white and simply drag it into uh, my library. Here it is. So once I bring these little dots over here, and I'm gonna make it a little bigger, uh, what happens if I want to, for example, have it up here or disappear with the opacity? Well, that's very simple. When I go here and I'm going to name it dots, so I know that I'm working on the little dots here. And as you can see, changes here also into the timeline. I'm going to have to work with the opacity. So let's say that uh, the dots at the beginning is white. And then when time goes, it becomes transparent. So all I have to do is uh, make sure that the opacity is set to 100% and click our first opacity keyframe. Then I'm going to move into time and all I have to do is to change the opacity to, for example, zero. And as you can see, Photoshop has already created a new keyframe for you. So the keyframe is telling you at this time, this is what happening in either positioning, transformation or opacity. So again, look what happens. The time goes and our little dots disappear. 
and now we don't really need it but I wanted to show you that option so you can uh, also hide it and again uh, if you perhaps wanted to do the opposite so to have the uh, to have the dots appear you just have to do the reverse start with 0% opacity and then bring it to 100% right now I'm just gonna pause and delete the dots because we don't need it for our animation Eddie was asking how to export um, the the file you have two way of exporting it either creating a gif or creating an mp4 to create an mp4 all you have to do is to click on the fly menu here and then click on render video and then all you have to do is to select your destination folder uh, in this case i'm going to put it into my desktop and make sure that you use the size of your document if that's what, what you wish you don't really have to touch anything else click on render and the video will render automatically another way is to go under file and export um, save for web legacy and as you can see because uh, Photoshop already knows that you are dealing with a, a GIF it should bring up uh, a GIF file here it is so here make sure that you select GIF for whatever reason if you have JPEG just select GIF and you can uh, loop it forever or only once I'm gonna keep it forever and uh, I'm gonna click on save choose my destination folder and click on save so uh, once we go back now into my desktop you can see that here it is so this is the gif and that of course shows in different frames um, on on a preview on a jpeg preview uh, but this is our mp4 that we created so we got the cat eyes moving and the logo popping in <laughs> fantastic so uh, hopefully that was helpful I know that we got like literally four minutes to go um, I want to point out some other um, way of animating let me know if you have any questions Andre is saying this is so useful because we it's much easier to follow than uh, after effect which allowed to ask someone else to be in charge of the animation no further problems um, Alessandro is saying go to go ciao Alessandro thank you for being here we're gonna get going soon um, yes Marta say drag into the browser to see the gif we can totally do so Marta I think that's a fantastic idea I have a lot of pages open so hopefully it just opens up I mean you get my gif in there let's see if it works with my google chrome maybe not but uh, yeah the, the gif usually that's that's exactly what I've used here um, so on my website when I loaded this image this is the gif uh, working as well and if you see these little stars and you wonder how I've done them um, those is our you can achieve those by using the style the little style uh, other option of your animation simply creating a style and then creating a layer style let's see if I have time to show you that as well but I think we're gonna be pretty much having to say goodbye first of all I have to show you the schedule I'm gonna run through the schedule real quick because after me we have the amazing Paul Trani with a Photoshop daily creative challenge and then a character design with Anna Devinscourt followed by the second challenge of the day with uh, Andrew Ockradle Illustrator daily creative challenge then video editing with Puno from ILO creatives then third challenge of the day with Jesse Showalter in Adobe XD followed by a lovely stream in with uh, Alice Lee with doodle therapy so I hope this was useful guys like let me see if I can show you like a couple one minute I don't want to be cut some let me know if I got like maybe one minute two minutes I don't know yes please explain layer style okay I'm gonna do it super fast so I'm gonna use our dots I'm gonna bring in the dots again and in this case I'm going to uh, click on the down pointing arrow and select style so click on the style first keyframe we do not have any style then click on your um, uh, effects and for example I want to create an outer glow and I'm gonna set my outer glow uh, to let's see multiply and I just want to make sure that is very visible here so perhaps I'm gonna make it a this color it doesn't make sense but it works for now um, okay great then let's reduce the noise and click on okay look what happens we have our outer glow so if we move in time all we have to do is to click on the outer glow style and for example change it to 
uh, less opacity so it goes away and then click on OK and as you can see Photoshop has created a new animation for that as well so uh, we have it here unfortunately it's time to say goodbye hopefully that was helpful I look forward to see you tomorrow we have uh, more cross up happening on a getting started but I leave you with a wonderful Paul Trani uh, with the Photoshop daily creative challenge thank you so much for being with me and I'll catch you tomorrow Bye, everyone.